Welcome to another. Oh, I have to get rid of uh, Archer and uh, <laughs> Archer and <laughs> the Enterprise. Ooh, hello. There we go. Goodbye, Archer and the Enterprise. We hardly knew you. Welcome to another <laughs> edition of Strange New Pod. I'm your fleet admiral and host, Julian Brown, alongside the best bridge crew. This side of someone at Paramount regretting ever hitting the upload button on these things. Whether they do or not, we'll never know. Um, yeah. Captain Hawk is here and wants to know how they could do TNG so wrong with these, and especially Riker and Bev. Uh, Subcommander Giraffe is here and is still shuddering at the fact that we even have to talk about these in the first place, even though it was your idea. It was only my idea. It was oh, your Lord. idea. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, not we, sorry. We are an all Star Trek podcast. Man, I like we we don't have audio for like two seconds, and Matt Harker's like audio. Y'all are like shark, shark, Oof. shark, 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 sharks. We're here. We love. He's the, the podcast inspector. He's the podcast inspector gadget, making sure that we're on track. And finally, 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 Commander MC is here. And I think judging by some convos that we've had uh, when these came out, is just very indifferent to the entire thing. Meh. We'll mm, get into it. We'll get into it welcome back how we doing guys how goes it going well going well saw dude right. this week yeah you did did you love yeah, it yeah i did did i so loved good. it i i went to watch um ghostbuster frozen empire in preview i was uh, invited to watch man. it I, was... I almost started singing the ghostbuster song but I my brain went Ghostbusters and my lips were about to just start humming the X Men theme. So I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, premiering tomorrow. I think. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um hitting the good nostalgia. Let's say yeah. it's for us. honestly. If I if I didn't have this, I'd probably be there tonight. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, hey, depending on how this very short episode goes, maybe you could still make a showing. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like at 11 p.m. one, we'll see. I don't know. Um, man, it has been a week, folks. Um, my family is dropping like flies. Karen's sick. The kiddo is sick. Oh. As it goes. But we're here, and we're talking about it's pretty good for shit. Um, except it's not pretty good for shit in this situation. That's right. This week, Paramount wanted to celebrate 50 years of animation. Star Trek, the animated series, to be specific. This was after Prodigy's cancellation, <laughs> as Giraffe rubs her Proto uh, Star shirt. <laughs> and then they maybe mucked it up. Even more, depending on who you talk to with these. Some people actually love them, and some people like us are indifferent or just straight up hate them. Very short treks. That's what we're talking about today. We are going to talk about each one for better or for worse. I'm sorry, but we're here. Hello to everyone in the chat. Keep your comments, your questions, your snide remarks coming all night long, because there will probably be a few <laughs> about these. Um they, Matt writes, they canceled Disco and Prodigy to waste budget on this. Prodigy? Uh, uh, um, mm, mm, no. Me, mm, <laughs> no. 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 Um, no. No. Um, we could talk about that next week. Um, mm -hmm. But no. But before we get into all that, Hawk, I feel like I haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Uh, we need yeah, to, I was yeah, off last week, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. We need to thank our Patreon Collective members at the Ready Room level and above, please. Indeed. So thank you to Simon Stager, Jeff Reeve, Mariah Gossett, Tallula, Jen Stein, Tina Alexander, Joe Saparito, Noe Santos, Kang Wee, Takako Nagumo, Fernando Nogales, SMK, Laura Linderman, Colin Davidson, Jesco, Michael Graham, Emily and Travis, Gildara, Cassie, Spot, Maggie Light, Tyranna Kilicus, Wayne Ritz, Scone of Arc, Sean, Jay Howard, Anna Yurdadon, Mahalani Uchiyama, Matt Harker, Davey Willett, Tara Pollan, Slope 74, Rude Parakeet, Joshua Miller, Adam Sanders, Aris Spengen, Lanky Guy, Aaron Valky, Carl Angoli, Michael Kwan, TJ, Mir, Caitlin, Elizabeth Dean, Jim McMahon, ADHDEC, Sedano 317, Hookah Hair, 
three fries short. Cat tip, cat tip, sorry. Tripping the reed alert over a pineapple. Sean Manning, congressional baseball fan. Chris Waterman, RHCB. Martin Simpson, Seven Rasmussen. Anna F. Norman Buckwald. David Prime Hildebrand. Taryn J. Robinson. And our newest collective member, Ensign Lex A. Peru? I think it's French giraffe. Help. Is that a French spelling? Please. P R E A U X. Pro. 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 Yeah, Pro. that's how you would. Okay, okay, wait. Because they're like a bunch of Americans with like French names and they pronounce it in like. And I'm like, what? No, that is what like. What do you mean? How it's many like letters one is syllable. There, there? It's pro. Okay, so. Yeah, apparently it, Tara it, says it's, it's pro. Actual French, it's Ensign Lex A. Pro. There we go. Like pro, like a pro. Like, like a pro. Yeah, pro. Let's go. But then, you know, I mean, look at what they're, how they pronounce Des Moines. Des Moines? Des Moines? Des, Mo Des, Des, Des Moines. It's Des Moines, right? Des Moines. Yeah, Des Moines. why not? It's Des Moines, but like, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> By the way, I was talking about your Proto Star shirt earlier, Jeff. I like how you're wearing that like in protest, and I'm wearing so, um, a Star Beat. Uh, it was made by MC, yep. by the way, I want to say. Yep. And I'm wearing a Starbase 80 shirt just because it's a shit show. So, oh, there goes my thumb. Hi, thumb. Hello, <laughs> thumbs up. Um, Thank you to Matt Harker. Sorry. Ensign Lexapro. Oh, Ensign Lexapro. Oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, guys, a big thank you to our amazing Badmirals, our executive producers who keep our whole intact, our nacelles running, um, our warp core purring. And our shields at maximum. I'll stop. Uh, <laughs> Simon Steger, Commander Chris, Ernesto Castagna, Chris Waterman, and Tara Pollen. Thank you guys so, so much. Um, I was going to say I was wearing a Starbucks 80 shirt also because it's a shit show. So, you know. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get some news out very quickly. We are one week as of today away from our last days of disco farewell tour podcast festival we have great shows it's been a long road to getting from there to here i will just <laughs> say it but giraffe's nodding her head because she knows it's fucking true um <laughs> yes we are finally getting there uh the schedule should be out on monday we are the, the biggest thing i'll announce with that is that we are going to be having on saturday a pre-recorded panel uh, about the captains of Discovery, and um, that's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to do that. Uh, I'll be moderating that one. Um, a lot of great shows. I'm not going to list them all now. You guys can see the, sh the schedule on Monday, but um, we can't wait for the festival. One last hurrah for Star Trek Discovery. Um, Discovery will also be ending when we're at Trek Long Island, um, which is interesting. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that's why I'm saying that Trek Long Island is just over two months away. So we're getting there. We're going to be there. We have some amazing things plans. MC is stressing out. Don't stress, MC. It's okay. We're going to be fine. We'll get you here. I will <laughs> smuggle you on a train or a plane or an automobile. We will get you across the border. We'll figure it out. And then you could stash Hawk with you, too. So um, He doesn't have legs, so you can put him in a yeah. in his suitcase. He might, you know, his his hollow emitter might only go so far. We need so a mobile far. emitter. We need you a need mobile, a mobile emitter. emitter. Just for sure to cut holes in the... <laughs> Wait, but you're a hologram. You don't need to breathe. Um, That's true. Yes. So Trek Long Island, that is coming up. Um, There's some things going on with Trek Long Island that we cannot talk about yet, but we will be doing... Some form of some form of sweepstakes. So do with that information what you will, but that'll we'll have information for that soon. Um yes. Giraffe, you have yes. WonderCon coming up, and I believe I think, <laughs> I think this is okay to talk about. One of our amazing patrons is actually gonna be doing some coverage for us there. Yeah, so uh, first of all, I'm in uh, early con crush because uh, I'm, uh, I think maybe you followed that I'm making costumes <laughs> as usual. Uh, but right now we're making free costumes and um, it's been a bit crazy. Uh, so yeah, I've enlisted the, the help of one of our patrons to help me cover. Um, I don't know if uh, they're here. I don't think they're here. I don't know but, if they're here. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, and uh, why? Because there are like some very cool Star Trek stuff happening in WonderCon this year. Uh, we're very happy uh, to see that Disco is going to also uh, show the first episode of the new season at WonderCon on Saturday. Uh, I think it's at 3.30 p.m. Um, so if you're around L.A., Anaheim, Southern California, uh, I think there are still tickets to buy for the con. And if you want to see the first episode... Come watch it with us. We'll be here to cover it. And also, for the first time, I think it's the first time. Is it the first time? Oh, it's definitely the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, for the first time, there's going to be an official sing-along, Star Trek sing-along on Friday at 8 p.m. So uh, you're going to be able to sing along the... I don't like this episode, but that's going to be great. <laughs> all system stable. All system stable. I wish I the was musical. going. I wish I was going. <laughs> the musical episode of Strange New World Season 2. There's going to be an official sing-along on Friday night. Um, yeah, if you're around Southern California, WonderCon is not an expensive con, to be honest, compared to San Diego Comic Con. I think it's like a third of the price. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. I think it's a third of the price. And there are still tickets. And um, yeah, I'll be there. Uh, we're, I'm going to the sing-along as the uh, Bitazoid trios with my friends so we can be rambunctious and be crazy. <laughs> and <laughs> just, you know, to bring some, like, sassiness. Flair. 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 Um, and on Saturday, I forgot to, to say that, but uh, Michelle Paradise will also be here. Uh, for the for the panel and uh, Ola Tunde help yeah. help the director and executive producer of Star Trek Discovery. I'm blanking on his last name. I'm so sorry, but he's amazing, and the reason why Discovery is so awesome. Um, he's amazing. So yeah, um, I I don't know. I'm trying to have more people come to Southern California because like uh, I feel that I'm alone here and uh. That'd be great for people to... Usan Samne, <laughs> thank you. Latuda <laughs> Usan Samne, thank you, thank you, thank you, Colin. Yes. Um. Yeah. Yeah, they'll discuss more about the final season and uh, are going to give some teases of what to come, so... Yeah. Yay! And come see me, I have stickers! Stickers! <laughs> stickers, stickers, stickers. Um, that's awesome that WonderCon's finally doing some Star Trek stuff. We are excited for it. We are excited well, to have you there. Well, we would love more Star more, Trek stuff. More, mm. <laughs> more, that's right. Are, I'm a bit disappointed because there are not a lot of fan panels, including not mine. Um, <laughs> but there are not a lot of fan panels on Star Trek. And um, I know, I don't know, I'm thinking they're trying to also, you know, have a different con between WonderCon and San Diego Comic Con. They're the same convention, basically. Split one for more people around here and one that is more international, let's say. So, yeah. We always love to see more Star Trek. Come on. Give us more. <laughs> Indeed. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what you do. And I want to see that cosplay. I'm, like, so stoked. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> Any actors from Disco going to be there? I don't think so. I think it's no. just just uh, Michelle Paradise and Lila Tunde. So, um, yeah. but they are both amazing, and you should have the opportunity if you're there to listen to them speak because they did a audio commentary for the Disco season two finale, and it was amazing. So there's that. Uh, that's also right, Rick Hernandez. The filming of Section 31, directed by Ulatunde, has wrapped, apparently, per Trek movie. So oh, that's yeah. cool. Can't wait for a trailer, Paramount. Mm -hmm. Something. I'm telling please. you. Star Trek Day is season. coming up. <laughs> they need mm -hmm. to Disco Season 5 to start yeah. before like, releasing yeah. this thing. True, true. Um, finally, last bit of news before we get uh, get going here. Uh, Patreon. You guys are amazing collective. Giraffe is moving her camera to show something. Because Matt is like, are you in a different thing? No, I just changed the wall. I'm just like in the other wall of the of the place. That's all. Yeah, there you go. Just like turn my table. That's all I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so to our amazing collective at the ready room level and above, uh, X-Men 97 premiered yesterday. If you haven't watched it yet, it's fantastic. Uh, me and MC were literally arguing about it right before we went live. <laughs> 
Um, it's so good. We did our uh, X Men uh, Star Trek comic crossover. Me, Giraffe, and MC. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, check that out. It is yours. It is exclusive to you. It is not going anywhere else. So listen to that. Uh, and then also a big thank you. I'll say it again to them, our partners at Heroes and Villains. You get 20% off your first order using our code STRANGE. They helped us get into the spirit of that, sent us some amazing X-Men gear. Um, go look. Their Gambit collection just dropped. It's amazing. So All pretty. that good stuff. Yep. Um, uh, Gene Kang, all I know about X-Men 97 is that Magneto came to the funeral dressed to be the dramatic grieving widow and eyeliner and opera gloves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gene. It's true. I mean, where's it's the very lie? True. And then Matt <laughs> Harker. Absolutely no lie. Matt Harker, MC, you'll appreciate this one. All the gays will be Gambit this Halloween. Um, oh, God. Where's yes. the lie also? Matt, oh, where's oh, the yes. lie? Matt, I expect to see you as Gambit at Halloween. If not, we're going to have to uh, have a talk. Um, all right. Anything else? Did I miss any news folks? Anything else? Um, I did a write up on uh Toronto, uh, yes, you did. Comic Con last weekend, uh, where they had, uh, Anson Mount, Ethan Peck and Christina Chong. So everyone, uh, go to our blog and check that out uh, because they answered some very good questions and I think I covered all of them. Hey, I think you did. Um, anything else? Anything else? Good. Let's get, as I write in my little notebook, uh, to the strange new loop. Yes, yes, here we go. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> plain and simple, if you can call it that. Plain and simple, Garrick. Do very, uh, yeah, you guys need to do very short tracks better, all of you. Mm -hmm. What's your pitch? Go. <laughs> MC, go. I don't have Casper Kelly write it. Oof. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am sorry. I, I no offense. No, actually, very, very much offense to him. He was not. His humor was not the correct humor for very short treks. They needed in instead of the jokes. The jokes need to actually be about Star Trek, which these were not with the exception of one of them, which we'll get into. Um, it, it needed to be jokes stemming from more lower decks kind of um, humor, where it's like stemming from the the fandom from Star Trek, uh, rather than what was basically scatological humor. So that is more of a celebration of Star Trek. Like, seriously, make jokes about Giant Spock, make jokes about... the. Uh, since you're you're celebrating 50 years of the animated series, make jokes about the episode where Spock and Kirk can s suddenly breathe underwater, or the episode where there's a giant a giant Spock. Um, the fact that Chekhov is not in it, like finally have animated Chekhov and have him be like, "Where I was locked in a closet." Walter Koenig was like a phone call away. Come on, mm -hmm. they got literally everyone back for those, and not Walter Koenig. Come on. Mm -hmm. Who else has so a pitch? You want us to you want us to pitch it or you want us to like say what would change? Well, MC just said what she's changed, so it could be whatever you want at this point. You could pitch I it, think, you could say I what think, you could change, you can give me your own story. You do do you do you? I think I just wouldn't have it being mean spirited. Because it was mean spirited. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like sure, we talked about the humor, but everybody why was everybody so mean? Like I just watched the last one that I watched but forgot, and I'm like why is everybody so mean? Like, what the... When did that ever happen, you know? Um, it felt mean. It felt like people who had, like, problems, mm -hmm. like, and they didn't want to talk about anything. Um, but I think that what I'd pitch is basically more or less what has been done by Aaron Walkie. is just having everybody, like, all track, all, just have, like, random... Um, random crews with people from like different animated series and have them go do things. I don't know, or some explanation, but random stuff that happened in TAS. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, like a little bit of lore, like add to it. But I, I, do, I do understand it was like kind of an advertisement stunt. But mm -hmm. I think there's enough meanness in the world. I agree. We don't need it in Star mm -hmm. Trek. Yeah. Yep. Hawk. First off, let me say that's so weird with Casper Kelly. Uh, 
from the interview I watched, it seemed like this was his kind of first foray into Trek when he was a kid. Like he was old enough to like, you know, see the animated series on television. So and he said, like, when he when it was gone, he felt, you know, really sad that it was gone. It's amazing that he, he's just kind of so disrespectful with with what is essentially handed to him. And it, yeah. it's it, it's like MC and draft said, it's gross out humor. It's mean humor. It doesn't really make sense in any sort of a it, like a Star Trek. Sensibility, I don't. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying it's just, yeah. it's flat out mean. Again, if it, if I was to do this, I would have kind of done one short, explored the Star Trek universe, you know, from TNG up. You know, you could do a TOS yeah. and that, but since the TAS was basically TOS brought back, explore it. Explore that animation style in, with the various actors that are out there right now. Yeah. You know, would love a phone call on that to do a short track like this. Take it seriously. All of it was gross, and it, it's like, this is why we're all so uncomfortable coming to this one tonight because it's like we, you know, we're coming here to bury this thing, not to praise it. We are gonna bury it. I mean, let's just let, before any like if, if anybody it. loved if all alive, of these, I would say come back next week for our disco season mm -hmm. four review because this is gonna be a rare, strange new pod shit show. Um, and 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 that's coming from me who's gonna defend like one and a half of these. So, yeah. Um, before I go, I'll read a couple on, uh, on the chat. Yum, yum pod. Step one, make them funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, okay. No, yeah. I have to say that they were, fun they, they, I, I know uh, some people found it funny. Yeah. Like there were people on Twitter mm -hmm. being like, oh, this is great. And I was like, I would see it being great in like family guy kind of thing, you know, where like mm -hmm. the, the humor is already like, kind expected. of like. Yeah, yeah, it's expected. It's kind of mean. It's kind of like, you know, uh, like, like, scatological, I suppose. Like, you know, like, kind of mm -hmm. this thing. But Trek is such, like, not the place for this. I was just like, yeah. It's like, it's, it's like it's mean to Trek and to the characters itself. Yeah. And to yeah, us. This, yeah. Yeah, this is why I... I sadly think that Casper Kelly was the wrong person to do this because he he his pedigree is from Adult Swim, which this is very much an Adult Swim sense of humor, which is fine on Adult yeah. Swim, just not for celebrating fifty years of Star Trek and animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna continue because Yummy and Pod wrote more down down in the chat, <laughs> um, and I'll get to Jess's. Be bold and do a short that's just about weird, goofy sci-fi concept that can't happen in live action. That's what TAS managed to do with zero money, and I mean, bravo, a hundred percent. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then Jess up in the chat also wrote, "Where did it go?" Step one was be funny. That's the one that I read. The chat's moving so fast tonight, so apologies as I go back to this. Oh, man. There it is. Uh, from Jess, my pitch would be each short focuses on exploring an alien planet in the style of planet Earth, but much more humor-oriented while still informative. Yeah, you could do funny, and you could even do gross funny while still doing an informative, like, fun story. Like, you can be gross and educational and funny at the same time. There's just nothing educational about any of these. So, um, did I miss any? I don't think so. No. Um, I would. So I'll, I'll be the one that pitches one. I, I did pitch one and it's never going to get made. So I'll just say like what this should have been was again, like, yes, TAS is the reason that we have like lower decks and prodigy. But if you wanted to celebrate Trek animation, and it being 50 years old, do one or two with with TAS, but then like really go hard on what made the Discovery short trek so good. Make Lower Decks and Prodigy short treks. I wrote a short trek that I think you all read. I think you did. Mm -hmm. Where Boimler and Mariner are just doing some like bullshit maintenance on the Cerritos and... <laughs> And Boimler starts like daydreaming, and all of a sudden, uh, it's about like data, and they're talking about bubble bath, and all of a sudden, like Mariner's like, "Who the fuck are you talking to?" And <laughs> it's just like really just cute and like totally lower decks, right? Like, and all of a sudden, at the very end, it just ends with like <laughs> lore creeping on Boimler, and like 
That's what the show. A day with Mariner in the on DS when yeah. she was on DS9. Yeah, like, like give and... us some like extra information on those characters. Um, I will I will post it in in the Discord. People are like, yeah, that, I wish that was real. Um, I do too. Um, yeah. So like fun, informative. It doesn't even need to be informative. Just fun. What we already have from Prodigy and Lower Decks, right? Like make that. A celebration, Gene Kang. A little my pitch: how every ship does holodeck uh, waste removal. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> holodeck waste waste all the way down. <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> oh man. Um, anything else before I'm I'm gonna stall for another no, second? Let's no, let's fucking let's do just, this. You just want to get yeah. it over with? Let's all get right. it over yeah. with. Let's get it over with. It is our review if you can call it that, of the five very short treks. We're going to start with number one, Skin a Cat. And our order will go MC, Hawk, Giraffe, followed by me for this one. MC, your thoughts on Skin a Cat. Okay, well, as Julian said in the intro, you know, I'm rather indifferent to these mostly. And, like, starting with this first one, I actually thought it was kind of funny, mostly because I like bird play. So like just like all of these, you know, just stupid phrases that get thrown out and then it just like builds up. I mean, looking back on it now, I was like, no, that was really dumb. Like, um, you know, it was kind of initially I thought it was I thought it was funny. And then it was just like. No, it actually does not hold up, like, at fucking all. Um, and I, I don't understand what it what the context was, because, like, Spock is there, but it's not Kirk and it's not Pike. It's just some rando. Um, well, no, it's Kirk, but they then back backtracked and was like, no, that is not tra- Kirk. And I'm like, okay. Um, yeah, because he's being gross. And they were like, no, 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 that was not. That was not Kirk. And I'm like, yeah, like that was what I was confused about. Like the fact looks that like it was Kirk, Kirk. Looks like Kirk, talks with like yeah. Kirk. Like, I think this is Kirk, but like you never okay. nobody read the script. Yeah. Um and, and and the Enterprise like blows up at the end. Like, what's I don't understand this um at all. Uh and um like the biggest takeaway that I had from this is that it was very disconcerting seeing the TAS Spock and having Ethan Peck's voice coming I know. out. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, yep. Uh Hawk, what'd you think about this one? Well, I remember this came out back in the summer last year. Um, and initially I didn't even really want to watch it because like you know, after MC and Giraffe watched it, and uh, it's like this is the worst thing ever I've ever see i was like okay so i watched it and i was like it, it's not and i was like it didn't make me laugh but then i took a, like a harder look at it and that I, I think it's trying it was trying to make some sort of point about you know i guess diversity in the workplace is the thing and that except it did it all wrong and that you know because everybody was jumping on him and that because you know about the idioms he was using as skin a cat and that but then when you kind of think about it in that, if they're his crew, he sees these people every day and yet still feels the need to use idioms like that around them without really thinking about it. And maybe that's a play on Kirk. I don't know. But it it didn't make it any funnier. And, it, you know, just it is Kirk. You know, we, we definitely agree that it is Kirk and that it just makes Kirk look like an asshole on there. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Um, draft. Okay, so I watched this one in the cinema with everybody during the the what you call that uh, lower deck. There was like when they were releasing. It was fun. Like, yeah, we saw lower decks in the yeah. theaters. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah. And they showed this one. And did everybody watch Veep? The show. Veep? I hate I bought, Veep I, with a burning yeah. passion. Really. Yeah, yeah, this really. moment where she's just like, <laughs> what the fuck? So this was me. That was me in the cinema. Like, everybody was laughing their ass off. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, first of all, it's not funny. Like, I mean, you get the joke once and then you're like, okay, haha. And then it just, that's the only joke. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing from the beginning 
to the fucking end. Like he's making problematic, he's using problematic idiom for his crew and people are losing their shit about it. And that's, that's a whole joke. Plus the super sexy joke at the end, which I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember it was super fucked up. Where I think he's that like was in... the point, though, that it's just like, shut the... I, I, I'll talk about it once it's my turn, but I think that was actually I wonder what the was the point. joke at the end, like, about with the woman? And like... she loves me yeah, for, he... like, liking chicken tendies and mac and cheese, you know, yeah. like, all that shit. Yeah. I... And she wants to play Risk with me, I and think, gives was in there. Australia, yeah. So, like... yeah. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'll oh, I cut you all the time, so please cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was some sort of like theme going on. Like it, somehow he keeps manifesting like new characters every time he makes one of his dumb idioms, and so uh, the joke yeah, is yeah, he's yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, yeah. manifest yeah. himself the perfect woman, and who happens to know like you know, the way to get out of the and situation. And he gets but... the ship blown up for it because he's a fucking yeah. idiot. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It, so. Yeah, like, first of all, like, the uh, super insult joke of, like, you know, manifesting the perfect woman, like, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. fuck that. Uh, fuck that all the way up, all the way down, like, fuck all of it. Like, this is, like, you know, jokes from, like, that I would hear my grandfather make. It's just so outdated. And also, you know, again, and I'm always saying the same fucking thing, but sorry, like, read the fucking room read the room like we are in an era where people are making their bread and like making problem everywhere online on tv like calling people woke and saying that you know i should be oh i cannot even say whatever i want and like you know there's no free speech and like yeah there is free speech the only thing is that if you're being a dick i'm gonna tell you that you're being a dick and that's my right and you should not be a jerk and that's the thing is that like there's a kind of an overreaction that is like shown to you know the the use of idiom that he makes and that is kind of like we can't say anything anymore. And I'm like, that'd be funny if it was not in the context of nowadays where this is weaponized all the fucking time. So, and sorry to, to interrupt you, but J Jedi Cat brought this up earlier on how this was supposed to be, or maybe this was supposed to be an idiom on that, right? Like, this was this, this whole thing was supposed to be on, like, woke culture. And... I think that it was. I and and she also wrote that they didn't do it well, which agree mm. or disagree. I think it agree. was. Like he gets the ship blown up because he just wouldn't shut the fuck up. Like I think it actually this one I'll defend a bit because I think it does do a good job. Like just shut the fuck up. You're being a fucking tool. You're being, you know, a sexist piece of shit. Like just shut up and he doesn't and he loses his crew for it. Like Or you can read it that it blows up because the crew keeps saying or oh, you, you the could, thing but is I don't that, think like, so. Again, like again, again, and it's the same thing with the cloak of fucking war. It's the same thing. If your story is not straight, if your story is not clear, if people are not able to interpret interpret the thing, the metaphor, whatever, I'm not even gonna fucking like call that a metaphor because please, you know. You did a bad job. I don't and agree like, with that. If, if you touch things that are important and that are like right now in the discourse, do it well or do not fucking do it. Because this thing can be read to side way too easily. I found it very offensive. So if I found it very offensive, it did not do a good job. Like Fair. just the fact that everybody was like laughing at like MRS being how can you say that? People were cracking up. And I'm like, no, she's fucking right. Fuck that guy. Like, nobody was like, how can I tell? Like, nobody was like, oh. And that's the first episode. And your first episode is like doing an episode about a captain that is a sexist piece of shit that blows up the ship. How is that a celebration of Star Trek? Well, like, I animation? agree with that. Yeah. 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 Like, Again, mean fucking spirited, yep. not well written, and third, do not master the content at all. Um, that just, again, and it's the same thing that I had the problem with Sharad. It's like, if you're touching things that are like very important for people that right now are like, you know, not in a good place and making it a fucking comedy, I'm going to have a problem with it. 
Like if you touch about like identity or like, you know, I don't know, like people saying insulting shit to you, because that's it. Like he's saying insulting shit to them, you know? And the thing is that, or you do it very well and it's very good comedy or like, don't fucking do it. Don't fucking do it. And, you know, I was in this theater with everybody fucking cracking up and Amres being like, do not talk to me like this. And I was like, well, that tells me a lot about my friends. Good job, everybody. Let's go. Because I'm very often in the position being like, what did you say? Like, you know, and I don't say that I never say stupid things. I do say stupid things. Everybody says stupid things. But the way you're going to act when you're caught or like you did something wrong is going to say everything about you. And right. I don't know. I felt that the for first, first fucking episode, damn, the bar was not low. It was, low, no, it was the, fucking the, the bar was low. I, I will say that I don't think I laughed at any of these and even Aaron's. And that's Aaron's is great, by the way. Like Aaron's is actually legitimately good, but it's also not like meant to be terribly like ha 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 i'm laughing my ass off funny um i didn't have a big problem with this one let's move on to holiday party and giraffe i'm just gonna let you keep going because this one which one is this one? Oh, the well, spock and the, the bloopers reels. oh my god oh. <laughs> this one managed to make me feel so uncomfortable that i don't think i actually watched it to the end like, and somebody in the chat, I don't remember who, sorry, the chat is going super fast, was saying that it would have been way better if it was data. And I was like, yeah, because... A hundred percent. It doesn't have emotion, you know, and would be able maybe to read the room. But like, it's again making fun at the expense of like Spock's culture. And also kind of making him a dumbass which mm -hmm. is super fucking oh, yeah. weird yeah because he's not spock has never been like mean spirited and also again this thing is just mean and also you would imagine that if he had to do something like that he would run it through somebody it would peer review that 100 percent. and 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 just <laughs> is saying data trying to analyze chaotic party lower deck style could have been cute to be honest but like this what spock is doing in this one is exactly what Data does in Generations after Riker accidentally retracts the plank on Worf, and then Data's like, oh, that's funny. I'll push Beverly into the water, which isn't funny, right? Like, this yeah. would be a great I character mean, I study. found it funny. Oh, but... Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I would have, like, if it happened in front of me, I would crack I up. Maybe I would have like, like, a little... I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll keep going. Sorry. No, yeah, it, it's just... Again, like, think about it. What was the point? Yeah. What's the point of the story? Like, why is it funny? Again, it's funny if you're mean. You know, it's funny at the expense of somebody. Right. And I don't really do that kind of humor. Um, like, so I mean, the first one, it would be funny only if you laugh at the expense of to at the expense of somebody to somebody. Yeah. Oh. Nobody's answering. Uh, that. No. no, no. The expense you're, you're at somebody? Good. Of someone. At, of someone. At, at of the expense somebody. of someone. Yeah. Of. At the expense of someone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it just yeah. It just I would have and you know, we were like reviewing the comics, and I was talking about like how some of these comics you feel like somebody gave them a pitch of the thing and then they just drew the story <laughs> and not no having idea. ever watched anything. Yeah. That's how I felt about this episode. I was yeah. like did they ever watch an episode of Star Trek? Did they ever watch anything about Spock? But like legit, I my secondhand embarrassment got the best out of me. I want to meet somebody that actually laughed at this episode. I want to study that person. Mm -hmm. Like, is there anybody? <laughs> I, I, laughed, not... I laughed at Hemmer like doing a <laughs> at, at a joke that was actually funny and that was it. But it wasn't the main part. It was about Hemmer and just like someone wrote having Bruce Horak back was great. But that's I want to find somebody that yeah. found this episode no, hilarious and awful. watched it from like beginning to end and was like, this was great. I want to study that person. Not in a mean way. I, I just want to know. I want I have questions. You want to like <laughs> study them like normal? You want to go like schism study, like with like knives and probes. Like in uh, laboratory conditions, I think. Yeah. Laborat laboratory you conditions are important. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh Hawk. 
Uh, completely agree with Giraffe, particularly on the fact that they don't seem to know, like, the character of Spock and whom they're writing for. And the fact that Spock wouldn't, you know, think that people would find multiple, multiple, multiple deaths of people in that in some sort of blooper reel fashion. Funny to the rest of the crew in that he is way more intelligent and probably way more empathetic than that. And the fact that they chose to go that style, like, oh, he's a dumbass who doesn't understand comedy and the seriousness of it. And that it's just, it's a badly written sketch. And it also put me in mind of how they, um, the Orville accomplished uh, the same premise more successfully. And that, uh, if you remember the episode where Isaac uh, uh, played a practical well, joke again, on board. That's Isaac, who literally is Data. So, he cut, cut, yeah, cut he the, cut, yeah. the leg of the guy. Yeah. That was fucking hilarious. It's like it's surgically so amputated yeah. the guy's yeah. leg. Because again, nobody suffers really. I mean, yeah. he's like he's fine. You know what I mean? It's the future. He's gonna be fine. Like there's no. And again, it's he's not a b. Be... He's not a human. You know? Yeah. I yeah. mean, in the idea of like he's, he's a machine, right? Yeah. Oh, Ex the Orville. There's some some Orville love in the chat. Nice. Hawk, anything else? Sorry. Uh, no, I got a whiny puppy beside oh, me. Oh, I know how that goes. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, MC, this one. Okay, this one. I'm going to throw this, like, rewrite out for this episode. So basically keep everything the same where Spock has to put together a blooper reel. But instead, it's stuff like... Um, Ortegas sitting at her console and like hitting buttons and then Spock pointing out where she hit the wrong button. And it's just like dead silence of just the, like, because that's the, that's how, that's what Spock would think is a humorous blooper because it's like, you know, somebody made a mistake during their job and it's like completely like, average you could have um, just kept rolling on him getting wasted on blood wine with the klingons in the first episode of season two there's like so many opportunities sorry mc yeah it's okay um yeah this one it did feel to me like they did not understand who spock was at all and yeah and now that data has been brought up it's like yeah it it feels like maybe this originally was written for data but brent spiner was not one of the people in this, he, right? No, Brent Spiner was not in these. Yeah, so so maybe it He's was originally everything. written to be Data, but they, they couldn't get Brent, Brent Spiner. Standing in the back. This is the one thing that Brent <laughs> wouldn't do. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Um, because it's, it's gross um, because, you know, you have people, like, getting um, just graphically, like, cut in half. Um and it's just, it's unpleasant. And I can't believe this is how we get Bruce Horrock back. Oh my God. It's, you so know, much. And, the and the fact that Spock in this literally says, it is funny because he usually yeah. has legs. It's like, no, that dude is dead. <laughs> you know, like, it's, it, mm. no. Yeah. Everybody who it's said already, good. I think Giraffe and Hawk both said, like, Spock is smarter than that. Like, yeah. But also, like Vulcans are not, like Vulcans are not immune to death. They're not, mm -hmm. you know, they wouldn't. They grieve for people. Like it's not like they're dead inside and you know don't care for people. Like no, they do. They. It. That's why it's also weird that just us. Uh, Spock is like repressing his emotion, including, like, understanding that death is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also, Spock is funny. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. the he end is. of like every TOS episode where he's like sparring with McCoy and Kirk, like, he's funny. He's Captain, funny in a different way. Yeah. Captain, not in front of the Klingons. Yes. <laughs> Will never not crack me up. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I did like seeing like uh, Strange New World stuff in the. T T A S style, like that mm -hmm. is like the the one yeah. thing I will take from all of this. It's like I liked seeing characters in the T A S style that were not from T A S. Like that's cool, but the actual content of it is terrible. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I want to know how the actors just like read through these scripts. Like, I have a real question. Like, yeah, yeah. here, e Ethan Peck, here is some money. You can literally phone this in. Jonathan Frakes, here's some money. You can phone, like, dude, money talks. We're getting at, mm -hmm. we're, we're still recovering from a pandemic. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. money talks. Um, I'd be super stressed fucking around with a uh, Spock character, though. I, I don't think yeah. so. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, I, legacy and stuff. I did not like this one. I did not laugh at anything Spock. The two things I laughed at were Hemmer going, I need another drink. And <laughs> something else that he says later on. Like, he does a very good, like, because, <laughs> like, someone said, oh, the fart right like the stupid diarrhea joke like we're we're at diarrhea jokes on this episode mm -hmm. by the way which is like negative 15 points there's there's funny diarrhea diarrhea jokes and and this ain't it um but like there when what, when spock there's some funny diarrhea jokes there is there are um uh -uh. bridesmaids come on bridesmaids out oh, and okay, and dumb, uh, yes. uh, dumb and dumber okay, dumber right. Dumb and yes. dumber. Okay. 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 Yeah. I have to. I have to tell to everybody that Julian rewatched every single one of them. I did. And I right think... before the pod, so they're fresh. <laughs> yep. I think mean, he's the only one who did that. <laughs> I did that not... too. I had to rewatch. My... I did. I rewatched them all, like just before the pod. So as fresh I as the diarrhea, them, I hope I don't have. Burned in my brain. They're burned in my brain. I also, don't need to watch them again. Also, apparently, getting hit in the nuts is still funny. Getting hit nuts is always funny. Honestly. Yeah. Um, man not, getting not hit it, by football. Man not, getting hit by football. Not when it happens to me. <laughs> oh, my but, groin. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the the diarrhea joke, and then like I think like Spock says something like it's funny because he farted, fart and something, and Hemmer just goes in like very Bruce Horak, <laughs> fart. And I was like, okay, that was funny. The rest wasn't, but that was good. This one sucks though. It's yeah, awful. yeah. Um. Worst contact number three. I'm starting this. Fuck one. that. I, yeah, I know. You still, Please. That's how that's how much Julian hates this one. Oh my god. Oh uh, one. If you want to be realistic about this one, what Will does at the end of this one is the right call. Um uh, that being <laughs> said, did we really lower ourselves to fucking picking your nose like booger jokes? at a planet of booger eating people and I, I i don't this one giraffe you're like i don't understand how people read through this and are like okay with it i swear like jonathan frakes and gates mcfadden needed to have been like two bowls in and we're just like all right whatever because this is so i want to know how much money they got to do i want to i do too this i one... need to know i need to know how much money I need to be <sighs> able to buy Jonathan Frakes to do whatever I want. It was it's just so uh... disgusting. Like, <laughs> disgusting literally. Like, I don't care if it's animation. Hug just it was got the still joke. fucking it was, gross. Yeah, it was gross. And, like, when Will when Will is looking around the room and, like, no. Oh, oh, God. No, I'm Will. I'm like, fuck no. One, this isn't funny. Two, these people don't deserve to have a warp core, but that's another story. Mm -hmm. um, this is horrible. It's just bad. It wasn't funny. Um, this one, I don't like the other two are also, I mean, I, I'm fine with the first one. The second one is bad. Like they're already eh, but like this one is, I almost turned this one off. I watched it to get through it, to get through it, but I almost turned this one off. It is just so bad. Um, the shining light, if there is one, is that Frakes did a really good job playing Will for two and a half minutes. Um, that's that's <laughs> my biggest takeaway. Um, and by the way, if you are someone who brings your leftover fish to the break room, you should get fired. Just saying. Don't microwave your fish in the break room. That is true. That was a good point in this episode. I'm trying to take away a positive. Don't bring leftover fish to the break room that's it i'm done this fucking sucked mc <laughs> uh the vibe of this episode for me was um episodes of ren and stimpy where they would have like close-ups of like like hyper realistic 
things. Um, and it was always gross and disgusting. And it was something that just like hit me on just like, like a primal level of a, oh, I can't with this. For some reason, this episode really reminded it reminded me of that like just the way they they drew the the boogers and uh, snot and it was just and it was um yeah i mean i just don't i don't understand why when we're coming to 50 years of animation the to celebrate 50 years of animation in Star Trek, this is supposed to be a funny celebration. Joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, because also you're making uh, Riker and um, Crusher look terrible. Um, I mean, I mean, yes, yes, I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't blame them at all, but um, th these, I'm not a diplomat. They are. <laughs> Um, and I, I would assume Starfleet would prep people for, um, you know, they wouldn't, no, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't, <laughs> but at least, at least, they should. Will, at least Will and Bev saw that that entire warp core engineering room was a, a like a massive OSHA violation. So, you know, there's, yeah. there's that there's no all shine Starfleet. There's, there's not there. That Sorry, is true. I forgot. Um, and as short as these are, it's like this had literally one joke in it. I mean, okay, maybe maybe it because they did have a couple other things, but it, it was just like this species is gross. That is like mm -hmm. the the only thing it had, you know. That it's like let's just repeatedly say that the species is gross, and I I I'm sorry, I need a little bit more than that. Um, did I skip anyone in this hawk? No, everybody. We're no, still only two people deep in this one. Giraffe. The less, the least said hawk? about this one, the better. Hawk no, giraffe. Giraffe. Me? It's no, giraffe. Okay. giraffe. Okay. Um. Well. Okay. Again, I understand nobody likes boogers. You know, for some it's dumb to have a, a a species made of booger. Like I don't know. Make them armors. Make them like goo. Make them like I mean the what's the name the the baul or like. Loki goo ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so is Ar know, Armis. Like, you know. The barrels are kind of like, you could consider them gross. By right? the way, was like, Armis a them, like, Huh? Armis from Skin of No, 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 no I don't think. No. no. no I think uh, Armis was a singular. I like yeah. how now we're talking about somebody totally different because nobody wants to talk about that fucking episode. But sure. But like, what's the bowl? The bowl like are like kind of like gross and nightmarish, right? Yeah, you see that thing like coming out of water, you're like, yeah, fuck no. But <laughs> for real. No, and now they're part you? of the Federation. <laughs> but now they're part of the Federation. You know, like it's like like I wouldn't see Starfleet just be these people are gross, we're not gonna talk to them if they're not gross morally, you know? Mm -hmm. Um and I think that it's always been the point of Starfleet and Star Trek to also be, you know, some cultural difference, some be, some like species look different. Like, look at the Tellarite. The Tellarites are weirdos. Like, they look scary, in my opinion. <laughs> Sorry, Tellarites. But, you know, nobody ever talk about this. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> and the thing that the whole joke is like, these people are too gross, so we don't want to talk to them. Are, is again a weird fucking message, you know? I understand we don't like booger. I don't like boogers either. Like this was gross, like one thousand percent. But in the end, it's calling people like this and being they're gross physically, they're gross in their manners. So we refuse to like we make fun of them. And we kick them out, which is again like not really the Star Trek spirit, you no. know. And mm -hmm. and then it's a, again like a ten year old joke, like like ten yeah. year olds will joke about this. And yeah, there's one joke. you're right. It's again one joke. And yeah, what I mean, bringing a message, bringing up ten year olds. I mean, it is very much like who did not when you were like in third grade or whatever have don't hang out with that kid. He eats his own boogers. 
which is basically what this is. Dude, we were all eating our own boogers at 10 years yes. old. Like, come on. And again, um, it's like click behavior, you know? Like, yeah. it, that's, it's gross. It's not funny. And I don't know. I I know there are like everything is not supposed to have a message. That's not what I mean, but like No, I know what you're saying though. I, mm -hmm. I think that it's not upholding even a good message nowadays. Well, listen, like the whole picking your boogers thing is gross and microwaving fish in the break room is definitely unacceptable, but but devil's advocate here, as a massive fan <laughs> of Dune. So is spitting in front of someone, you know, but that is a sign of massive respect for the Fremen in Dune to share your water with someone that is showing a sign of respect. And that's when like everybody's like about to draw knives in the room and Duncan is the one that spits back and they're like, thank you for the blessing of your water. Right. We, we, mm -hmm. we respect it. The, the, the way he delivers that line is great. So there's the Dune argument. Right, like, yeah. Just because it's and not your e culture doesn't mean that, yeah. And it's even been made on Star Trek before. I mean, Vulcans, as established in the Strange New Worlds pilot, it public displays of affection are rude. Yeah. Wait, mm -hmm. what? Oh, when when Spock and Tapring oh. are like kind of yeah. starting to yeah, and yeah. they're like take that elsewhere. Yeah. No, and it's always like th this shows up in Star Trek so so often. Like yeah. these, like these people, like when Picard has to wear his little like pearl hats, like his oh. little like <laughs> net net thingy, you An know. Insurrection. Like, how yeah. many times do we see Picard having to do like weird ass stuff to like <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> greet a and new isn't, species? Isn't there one species where it's insulting to not insult them? Yes, oh, the Tellarites. No, in, in well, the Tellarites a little bit, but it's in Strange New Worlds. Ep it's the episode, the other Spock episode that Draft hates, um, Spock Amok, <laughs> um, where they want like it's almost like absolute candor, right? Like where remember Isn't that? that the Lord Egg episode? That that wasn't actually the episode I was thinking of because oh. I seem to recall it happening with Wesley. There's that one too. Oh, yes, I do know that one. Um, cause, oh, I'm trying to remember the episode now. Uh, well, like other Ferengis when you have to to try to whip them off in the yeah. lower decks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's something that always happened in Star Trek. So, you know, just being like, oh, boogers is where we draw the fucking line is like, <laughs> okay. Like, if people are too gross, then they're not our friends. And I'm like, uh I will say anyway. boogers are a health hazard, but, you know. Yeah, sure, but like I'm pretty sure bowels are fucking health are also. <laughs> well, I don't hey now, I don't know. And who knows, who knows if what their boogers are a health hazard? We have okay. no idea anything about this alien species. Fair. Very fair. This is see, good conversations come out of talking shit about these episodes. We always do that. <laughs> Hawk, I don't think we've gotten <laughs> to you yet, sir. I know you <laughs> covered so much. Worst I mean... contact. Yeah, this was the worst episode for me yep. personally, because I I get it. You know, it's tra it's making a play on you know weird customs that we you know we you know we might find strange, but that is perfectly normal. For some reason, why is he transposed like human the grossest human behavior in that as a, as the culture of another species? I I just you know because everything That's about a great them, point, Hawk. Right? Yeah. You know. They go there, and it's like everything's covered in boogers and that. It's like, if and giraffes. Imagine somebody microwaved a whole fish at school and that. And would you think that was cool? You know, it's like okay, maybe this is what they do. Maybe I'll respect their custom. No, because it's like the first thing they said when without the fish, it's like we can't wait to go up to your ship and microwave fish. And it's like nobody wants that. I just I it, it, again it it's it, it's another it's it's Casper Kelly going for the gross joke and that like yeah. over actually exploring like you know some you know which uh, a Star Trek you know staple and that you know interactions with other species that we you know we don't quite understand but at the end you know we sort it out but I kind of agree with with Julian on that. In fact, I kind of go a step further. Now, if I was Will Riker, I, I think I would have just been back and just photon the entire planet. 
Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I want to know what the be. hell is going on. Eventually, they would have rebuilt that warp core and that and made their they way out. Been fine. But, you know, you know, we stink for Vulcans. You know, they have to wear this yes, like, nasal like yeah. thing because we stink yeah. so bad to them that they have to to do something about it. Even Spock. Even Spock yeah, has, who to has have, a fetish like, for humans. He, yeah. And grew up with a human mother, like you'd think yeah. like. But even he in a full in a ship like full of humans has to get his like I don't know what they call it, like nasal suppressant. It's a nasal suppressant. Yeah, yes. Nasal suppressant. I'm gonna take Since this as yeah, go ahead. People, so like we're pretty fucking gross for Vulcans like mm -hmm. I, I don't think they really appreciate like we're like kind of the booger people for them didn't uh, <laughs> yeah. didn't uh, yeah. humans didn't humans stink to vampires in fucking twilight like wasn't there a thing in that too it's like you gotta get used to the smell oh. um I, I can't believe I actually know this oh my um, god let's go. I can't believe so I brought it up so more. please continue <laughs> um, humans do smell to vampires in twilight but it's not in particular bad they because bella smells delicious to edward right. and that's his big problem right well so yeah we're the booger people you we're, know yeah. we are yeah. and they still do first contact they still like serve in the fleet they still like you know go through being not being able to smell anything not tasting their food for years um so, you know, that would have been interesting to have, like, these reverse with Vulcans, but Star Trek has shown that most culture, like, most species will go through worse contact and still yeah. power through it, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, again... Humans are weak! Yeah. Um, I didn't like the fact, also, that, like, they, they made Will and Bev such assholes. No, they were total dicks. Mm -hmm. They were 100% yeah. dicks. Yeah. I was like, but they're nice people. Don't they like are. Both oh, of them are super respectable people. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's definitely, it was more like, oh, that's Frakes and Gates. That's not Will and <laughs> Will and Bev, you know? Yeah. Um, it was weird. Yummy on Pod wrote, make the humor that these Starfleet officers are super unbothered by snot. That would have been hella funny. Like, that actually might have worked. I agree. Ew. It could have worked. It could have worked. I, I still just want to like I, not have snot. I at just all would rather. Than, yeah, I, I would agree with that as well. Um, let's move on to the one good one, the one, and it was really good. It was cute, and that is holograms all the way down, written by our friend Prodigy, writer and executive producer Aaron Walkie, and patron and patron. That's <laughs> patron. right. I, thank you for that reminder. But we are not paid for our review of this. <laughs> but are we? Um, <laughs> Where's the money, Aaron? <laughs> Where's the, <laughs> the money train? Uh, Hawk, how, how'd you feel about this one? This one, yeah, this one was the more <laughs> funny in that. It's like, I, I, I it kind of, it's almost like in the inception of these animations because, like, yeah, where does it end? It doesn't really have an ending, I don't suppose. No, that. but it was, <laughs> it was still kind of amusing, and it did touch on some, like, some gr great episodes, and that, you know, um, or not, and some not so great ones too. Um, touched on Enterprise finale, uh, the uh, DS Nine, where it's a oh, thing. It's a fake in the pale moonlight. Um, yeah, I enjoyed that. Like I said, this one was a little more, this, uh, this one was way more palatable for me. Um, you know, being, you know, possibly a hologram myself. <laughs> possibly. 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 He's a hologram. I hope people get the jokes about you because like, so now we're just. It's it's becoming an inside joke, and I'm like, if people are like people turn in on the podcast, and we're like, he doesn't have legs. <laughs> They're like, why are these fuckers like laughing about it? <laughs> <laughs> I we need we need a disclaimer on this podcast by like year four now. <laughs> a little star hawk does in fact have legs. <laughs> hawk does. Maybe. We're not making fun. I actually have never seen hawk's ladies. legs, so I don't know. We're not. Nobody died. Nobody did. 
I've seen a video of Hawk walking in the woods, and I still haven't seen his legs. So damn. <laughs> Hologram right. all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's just keep the mystery going. Uh, yeah, uh, this one. Yeah, I enjoyed this one probably the, uh, the all of all of them the most. Yeah, fair. Giraffe. I was so anxious when I saw <laughs> I that Eric Falky wrote one of those because I was like, if it's bad, what the fuck am I going to do? <laughs> Don't say you didn't think this. Don't say you. I mean, that's fair. That is fair. I was, I was anxious. I was anxious because... I would have told him the truth, and we I would want okay. that. Because... No, but I think Aaron would have not wanted us to not tell the truth if this one was Yeah, bad. absolutely. And... <laughs> but, like, <laughs> well, I like him. He's a great guy. He is He's a great guy. He's a small guy. human, so I'd be like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Why? What did they make you do? <laughs> <laughs> How much money did they give you <laughs> to make a fart joke? They kidnapped um, this puppy. <laughs> yeah. But so, yeah, I watched it with a lot of anxiety and I was so relieved that it was so good. <laughs> I have to, I have to say that this is true. I was like, please be good. Please be good. Um, so, yeah, I, I, there's like the thing I loved is that there was, this was a celebration mm -hmm. of all Star Trek from TOS to Discovery, Laodex, Prodigy, like all the new Trek. Um, and that's from somebody that knows and loves Star Trek. And you can see because that's what we're doing. They're saying like there are like Star Trek jokes in it about uh, these other voyagers, for example. If you've not watched Star Trek, you don't get the yeah. joke. Yeah. And I just like seeing the Prodigy kids. I love seeing Lower Decks. Uh, yeah, and the licks. <laughs> um, no, I, I think that was a real... That was what I was expected, as expecting for a celebration of 50 years of animation. Yeah. Having everybody there. Yeah. 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 Uh, MC. Uh, oh, wow. I mean, basically everything that Giraffe said. Um, I was actually literally going to say that this is the only one that actually feels like a celebration um and it does like this is the only one that has things from everything single star trek in it um and it isn't just a i, I think maybe with the exception of um prodigy because it was too hard for them to do any sort of animation but everything else had like a good little bit yeah. where they make references and it's actual deep cut references sometimes like i have to tell you like two or three of my friends outside of the star trek fandom have sent me a clip of uh trip and uh the the you little mean florida uh, the man? trip <laughs> yes florida man uh they've sent Are it we to talking me talking about trip every single episode now is that apparently what yeah New pod tradition. Uh, but yeah they they they've sent it to me because they'll think they they think I'm gonna think it's funny or because or they don't know they don't know where it's come from and it's like oh have you seen this and I'm like yes that is from very short tracks you know a friend of the podcast wrote it um, so it is something that you know this is the thing that is actually celebrating Star Trek it is it gives me what I wanted and that is uh, animating people from all of the different Star Treks in the TAS style, except for the Lower Decks people and the, the Prodigy people. Uh, but that works. Um, I, I like how it's done. Um, the, the, the Lower Decks stuff, where, you know, talking about Boimler writing fanfic was just so... Yeah, just, that was so was good. Just kiss. Because he's, he's writing enemies to lovers about Kirk and... Born. What was... A Gorn? Gorn, yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, it's just I want that to be canon so badly. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's canon. In it, it's this is how they wrote the character. He's a it's guy true. who wrote fan fiction. He's giving that vibe yeah. from season one, episode one to you nowadays. So, 
Oh, I didn't know yeah. this little bit of trivia. Rick Hernandez in the chat goes, thanks to this episode, I discovered that Aaron originally wanted Trip to be in the Kobayashi Maru episode of Prodigy. Oh, I didn't oh, know that. No, that wouldn't make sense. That. Aaron, yeah. why don't you tell us these things, sir? Um, yeah. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Uh, um, MC, keep going. You good? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just like the, um, how Hawk said, the the Inception, It's it's just so... So it's so layered and it's just so confusing, but it it works so well. This is a this is a well constructed, very short tracks because it's you know still short, it's still very short, but they pack the entire thing in with a lot of jokes, and they're not all the same joke. But then there is that running joke of where where does what is the simulation of what? Yeah. Uh, so it it actually feels like there is a story here instead of uh, these aliens are gross. Spock doesn't get what bloopers are. You know, Kirk offends people. This has jokes and a story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love this one uh, for Armin and for Tendi alone, because I'm like, the biggest tendy stand um the part where like they end the simulation with trip getting blown up and uh you know <laughs> quark is talking to garrick and you know that that armin had the teeth on hand this time because he sounded mm -hmm. a lot more like quark than he did in lower decks which is not a an insult he was still amazing in that episode i just know he didn't have the teeth in but like i love that and how he's talking about root beer floaties and then it cuts to tendy and tendy's like no way this is how the federation got the romulans into the, the dominion war hell yeah like i love her energy so much that that was my favorite part i adored this one this is it drafts absolutely right like this is what it should have been for all five of these unfortunately it wasn't um but this give is, more work to Aaron Walkie. Give more work to yes. Aaron Walkie. Have more have more animation of Trip getting blown up um <laughs> to satisfy giraffe's need to see the trip only die. good trip is a blown yeah. up trip <laughs> <laughs> i mean at this point i think that um that i think uh oh, man i'm tired why can't i remember ah uh, this is so bad actor actor help, help. connor trainer thank you good lord i'm so sorry connor uh, I think that Connor Trenier agrees at this point. Like he said at uh at Star Trek San Francisco, Trip's dead. Deal with it. Like mm -hmm. I think he likes it. He's such so. a goat for this. He, he is for real. He, he really is. So, um, let's move on to our last short trek, which is appropriately titled "Walk, Don't Run." Mm -hmm. Uh, MC, we're gonna start with you on this one. What did you think of this? This one was not offensive at all, uh, really. I don't feel a lot about this one in general. It is like the, you know, it is a nothing. It is a nothing a is a stupid, great way to word it's it. a it's a silly little song. I think my favorite part of this is the fact that um Tendy wants to fuck Scotty. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's like the only the only joke in it that is at all funny and it's it's just it, it's it's a song it's not a particularly good song it's not a catchy i can't really remember it i, I just yeah. know that it happened um and um i i do know that uh noelle wells sounded okay you know singing she's a singer um, she but, has like al actual yeah. albums out yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I thought, I thought she sounded good, but it wasn't a particularly good song. So, um, this one more than any of them, I nothinged. Nothing. Yeah, fair. Draft. I found it weird that Scotty took and... his pants off. Oh yeah, that first <laughs> of all, like I was like. Okay, like, <laughs> can <laughs> uh, hello HR? <laughs> like, but also, why the fuck are they so fucking angry for? Like, I it 
it's just weird. Like, if I find somebody that comes from the future and be like, you know, you walked so we could run, I'd be like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, I'd be like, who are you? <laughs> and it's weird because it's almost like the same kind of thing from the first episode where it's like an innocuous saying that people are, you know, jumping on. Um, well, I don't, like, I don't, the thing here is not even like the, 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 um, it's just that I cannot imagine Scotty meeting somebody from the future and just being mad at them. That's all. Like, yeah, you know, it was weird. True. It was a weird vibe. Yeah. Like, yeah. I meet some, if Scotty meets somebody who has a science uniform from the future, it's going to be okay. Tell me about the world core. <laughs> let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's fucking talk. You yeah. know, like it, it just Tendi the, and the Scotty point. legit would be like best buds. Right? Yeah. Like drinking green. I mm. I it just it was so out of pocket for the character to not have a they didn't have a conversation. You know what I mean? There's no mm -hmm. nothing going yeah. on. And you're like when when for example in Strange New World, when they meet, you know, the the new kids. There's this whole thing, like, they want to ask questions, and they're like, you know, it, it just was, again, very out-of-pocket reaction for people in Starfleet. Um, and it's not like we've never seen this interaction before. We've seen it in... Uh, uh, well, Jordy was a fucking dick to Scotty. We talked about this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Best, yeah. Yeah, but then it's a 45-minute episode also. Also, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's Tendi. Who can get mad at Tendi? No one can get mad at Tendi. I don't know. I have a kid like coming and being like, you know, all, I'm, I'm just not going to yell at them. Like, I don't know. It was weird for Scotty. And then mm. the whole thing with Sulu just being naked. And I don't know. Like, it was kind of like uncomfortable again. You're like, we let grandpa write an episode of Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm hmm. Uh, I don't even oh, remember the end of this one. I don't remember the fuck that uh, it like, ends with the ship being attacked again, again, for sure. Yeah. Why not? I. If... Yeah. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> oh. That's all I have. I don't even. I barely remember this one to be honest. Uh, well, I mean, like you know, as unfunny as these things are in that, at least I'm getting a good chuckle out of people's reactions tonight. You know, because like that's that's the best I can compliment i could pay this entire thing a game with this one i'm a little on the mc side it, it, in fact it didn't really register anything strong but then like you know as spotted draft said and that it's like they don't understand the characters that they're actually writing for and that it's like scotty would not get angry at it like a, a, a stranger from the future and that he would find it fascinating he would want to ask questions but no it's just him yelling, and it seemed like they were just replaying the bit from the first episode and that, and it's like, a, you know, we don't all know how well that worked out the first time. So, again, for the last one, we're left with, you know, a song, you know, and no offense to Dawn Wells, you know, she does have a good voice and that, but they, they put her in the background of the, the entire song and that, too. Right, when <laughs> she's, I think, the only actual singer, like... Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, so... Congratulations, very short tracks. And I really hope they never, ever do any more again. <laughs> oh, I think that's a guarantee. Um, Hawk, by the way, we definitely need to check and see if you are, in fact, a hologram because you straight up called Giraffe, like full name Spotted Giraffe. Yeah, I was like, what did I do? Why is he mad at me? <gasps> oh, like, so, oh, no. So, something, mental, uh, something, full name ultimatum. Yeah. Something's glitching um, in the hollow matrix. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to... Sorry, I went old school there, Giraffe. I, yeah, it, it's okay. It's okay. I'm... Mm, MC's going to yell at me because I, I argued at her being ageist earlier. Oh, that was off mic about Magneto. I get he my. I get literally my. Literally called us old. Well, she called us old, and then I called like, her ageist. Up. I called her ageist, and now I'm gonna complain, and I'm gonna sound ageist. The thing that bothered me the most about this one is, is um, George Takei coming back, and and voicing Sulu because, like, you, you were saying how it's weird having Ethan in Spock's, like Leonard Spock's body in the first one. It it just like it just didn't work. Like 
is the is the line like and look at these abs kind of funny sure but it's just ah that's all that's all that's why you that's why you have him yeah that's what thank that. you exactly mm. like lower decks did it so much better so like, much and better. now horsey's gonna bite you <laughs> right it's fucking it's, dead and it's literally like he him, like supposed to be him like this is supposed to be young sulu and please like i'm not trying to be ageist but like he's an 80 something year old man like he's not like young i'm gonna like you know sword fight with you sulu from tos like oh it just doesn't work you know i mm, that's 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 my biggest complaint with this one it just took me out of it like the song's fine it'd be even better on mushrooms um a lot of things are better yeah on mushrooms. It, it's a lot it's a lot of like weird digs yeah. it's so weird oh i that's okay that's i remember one thing i wanted to say like like also pendy like insulting the tas style and ts style insulting the lower right. deck it style was just, so, was just like yeah fucking it, I mean, weird. And we, yeah and the only thing is she was nice about it it's like he had a limited budget and blah, blah, blah. it's like but, yeah but then he's like oh but your eyes are so big it was just like holy shit yeah like it, Jedi Cat I mean, writes maybe John Cho wasn't available, but no offense to John Cho either. John Cho does not sound like John George Cho Takei. only does John mm -hmm. Cho now. Right. So it's just did you guys I'm... buy did you guys watch the brother son or not? Yes, no, I want I to. I need to Thank watch you. it. I need to watch, watch it. Watch the fucking brother son for the I... best John Cho's cameo of all time ever. <laughs> still makes me angry they were not going out with season two. I'm angry and I haven't watched it. <laughs> 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 um I think that's it. I don't have anything else on this one. It was it was fine. Um, it was like what what MC said. It was nothing. It was just nothing, right? It's not it's not I, offensive. It's not bad. Well, it's just, I I did find like you know there were like some. I found that there was some digs at like newer track in it that were not great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like eh. Uh, I don't like when people working on Star Trek or Star Trek itself just like kind of undermine the rest of it you know what i mean yeah yeah it just nah it's no nope. it's kind of gross I thank god it. there were only five of them <laughs> <sighs> yes and they were and when short. i kept saying i wanted more short tracks this is not what i meant no we've listed yeah. on this podcast almost every single episode that we've ever done the short tracks that we want so you know mm -hmm. um without fail should we get to the mailbag and just you know forget the show ever happened yeah Yes. Uh, are we yes. at that point? Let's do it. It is time for the subspace to pull and mailbag. Hailing frequencies open. And we asked Trek Social Media what they thought about very short treks. And this is what they had to say. We only took the tr the Twitter poll tonight because it had a ton of votes. So, um, Hawk, you put them in. I'm going to let you take this. Give us the poll results, please. All right. We asked Trek Social Media what they thought of about very short treks and this is what they had to say 17 percent said love them hilarious 28 percent said they were fine 32 percent said what were they thinking and 23 percent said massive failure eject the warp core i'm shocked by That's how pretty close even. this poll Seven, was 17 percent of 111 <laughs> votes so that's like 20 people. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> like, I legit, I don't say that in a mean way. I want to understand. I want to get it. Like, yeah, I, I want to get it. Some I want somebody to explain to me how they found the Spock episode funny and the Booger episode funny. The, the, these two. The rest I can understand. I can be like, I see it. I, yeah. I see why, you know. These two, I want, I want explanations. Mm. I truly do. Agreed. Uh, draft, keep going. You are next on uh, my view screen here. Uh, take Jesco's mailbag, please. Jesco wrote, they were a missed opportunity to do something interesting, like a guide to a only seen once alien species or tour of a specific ship to actually add something new and interesting to the canon. Instead, these felt like half-baked ideas, and I've not thought about them once since they came out. Yeah, that's fair. 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 Mm -hmm. 
MC, could you take Mars's, please? Mars wrote, as with all things Trek, I wanted to like them, but alas, I did not. They missed the mark and did not have a Trek feel, but a more absurdist adult swim feel, which makes sense, but a real disappointment for me, except for holograms all the way down. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be the running consensus, right? Um, And I will take us home with Chris's who wrote, to <laughs> quote a very famous horse. No, sir, I don't like it. And that's our show. Um, before we end, it would be, you know, I would be remiss not to remind everyone of something that is really amazing about today, and that it is our captain's birthday. I say our because she is all of our captains. Happy birthday, Sonequa Martin Green, Captain Michael Burnham. We don't give birthday shout outs often, only to the very special ones. We cannot wait for the final voyages of Discovery. Um, we hope it was an amazing day. Speaking of Discovery, next week, Strange New Pod and the Dura Sisters kick off the Last Days of Disco podcast festival with our review of season four. Is it going to be three hours? We're going to find out. Um, I have plans to streamline this episode. Um mm -hmm. It is gonna I think happen. I'm going to be able to be here, so maybe it's going to be you four You told hours. me you weren't, and I was feeling better because then we wouldn't go three hours, and now you're ruining that. God damn it. We, we can talk about okay. it off I want. I want the chat to tell me. You want me at the season four? You <laughs> need to be there. Discovery is your show. Of course we want you. Shut up. Is there an outline? There will be, and we are going to go by it strictly next week. God mm, damn yeah, we'll it. That's it. the truth. Yes, you will read it. Um, that is going to do it for this one. We will see you next week for the kickoff show of Last Days of Disco. For MC, for Hawk, for Giraffe, I am Julian. Live long and prosper. Majram, sarcastic Vulcan salute. We love you. Good night. Thanks for beaming into our podcast today. If you want to keep the hailing frequencies open, you can subscribe on Apple and Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Like what you hear? Put in a good word with Starfleet and leave us a five-star review.